Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today where we are going to be going over some really fun tips and tricks with embossing. So if you enjoy the video, make sure you like and subscribe uh, and let's jump right in. Okay, so we have four main tips today. Um, they're really excited, really fun. Now, we're going to be using some gold texture all to start with. So the first tip I'm gonna go over is about tearing and matching an embossing folder. Now, this works best normally with a folder that has some sort of repeat pattern. This one here is one of our lovely embossing folders. I think it is called Starfall, but you can see it's got a repeat sort of pattern that sort of fades towards this side. Now, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to emboss this texture roll now. Uh, Texture roll is my favorite thing to emboss because it embosses so well. And what I'm doing here is that I'm checking that I'm putting it down, face down onto this side so that the parts that's embossed here is where it's gonna be face down and the debossed parts, the parts that are sticking out in a tactile, they're gonna push into it. So you gotta make sure that you get it, get it right with an embossing folder. Okay, so I will put this through my switch machine. Now you notice that I'm just using the one plate and then I followed the instructions on my uh, platform to show exactly how to emboss. So that's gonna go through there like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna emboss this piece that I've cut, which is the same size. So let's have a look through here now. Now, look at that. That is absolutely lovely. And that's the that sort of capabilities of protection roll. It's not gonna tear, I love that. Now with this piece, I am going to give it a bit of a spray because I just wanna loosen up the fibers in the cardstock here so that it doesn't tear when we emboss because the embossing folders are really detailed and it's just not what we want. So I'm gonna put this in the same place so I knew that it was kind of matching up here. Now with any look, we will get this matching perfectly, but if not, we'll just talk it through. So again, I'm gonna stick this one through my machine. Now what we're going for on here is to try to match up the pattern with the other tone of cardstock here. So we're gonna be able to create some kind of organic tear effects in here. Now have a look at this. So these are pretty much perfect. Now I can definitely lay that over there. So what I'm gonna do is I will tear this because we wanna get those organic tears in. And it doesn't really matter. This, when I say organic, it just means, you know, you, you can see that you've done it in a way that you don't know how it's gonna come out when you're doing it. Um, but it's gonna look great because we've got this torn corner here. It doesn't look, uh, you know, pre-cut. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find where this matches up. And I can see there, there's a triangle here. So that fits perfectly in there. Now with this being a repeat pattern, like I mentioned earlier, there are a few places that you can do this. And what I would do is I would adhere this down uh, so that it's fitting onto that pattern. Then I would adhere this part here. So what happens is that we get a lovely reveal in the middle. But before I stick any of that down, I wanna move on to my next tip. So the first two tips are sort of integrated here because this one is so cool. Now for it, I'm, all I'm going to need is some alcohol spray and uh, just a little bit of blue roll here or just any kind of kitchen paper will do. Uh, let me just move this off to one side here. Now, the gold texture roll here, it's got a certain quality and what that is, it has pigment on the front to kind of give it that lovely gold sheen. And all I'm gonna do, it's like magic this. I'm gonna spray some alcohol spray. This is just hand sanitizer. It's that sort of weak, cheap hand sanitizer. It's pretty much just alcohol spray. And you'll see that if I start to rub over here, 
like this. Now what's happening here is it's starting to reveal the original colour from underneath. And I'll bring this up to the camera in a sec because I want you to see the full effect of this because it is incredible. It gives you a kind of multi-tone look. Now have a look at this. So if I just move that into the light, you should be able to see that some of the gold there has worn away and it gives it a distressed look. So some of the sheen has gone, but not all of it. We've got a lovely kind of matte distressed silver that is coming through the gold there. And I just think that is incredible. So all I would do is I would combine this with the method I used earlier, and you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Now you can see here that I've matched up those patterns in the, in the embossing folder with the embossing folder underneath. I've rubbed away some of that gold so we've got that lovely silver sheen coming through. And I just think that is the most beautiful technique. And to finish this off, all I'm gonna do is add a sentiment here. So remember, this is just my first make here. Now, I could put that right in the middle there, but you know what, I don't really want to cover up this lovely effect. So I'm just gonna add that down there. And you'll notice that I've cut the sides in line so that they are parallel with the edges here. So I've almost cut it at a diagonal angle there because I wanted to angle that element. Now how cool is that? So those first two tips, one of them was just matching up your torn pieces so you can have multi-tones of different cardstock on one embossed piece. And you know that this can happen with any embossing folder. It doesn't have to just be a repeat pattern, but it's just easier to match it up with a repeat pattern. The second one was just rubbing away that gold element there. Now you can do this with the rose gold as well for a similar effect. It's always got that silver underneath. And I just think that is a hidden gem of a tip with uh, texture roll. So the next technique I'd like to show you is embossing some of our creamy acrylics. Now the best one to use here, so our creamy acrylics, we've got the gold, silver and rose gold. I've used some silver and I've used some gold. And what I've done is I've applied them really thickly using my texture tool. So the texture tool is this. All I did, I haven't got any of the paints with me at the moment because I thought I would just show this. But you know what? I'll show you with this pink one how I did it. Now, uh, I do have a sheet. Oh, here it is. There we go. Now the way to apply this here is just to put a big blob. This is with pink, obviously. You can do it with any of our matte creamy acrylics, but the, the metallics just happen to work very, very well. Um, so this is how I would apply the paint. Now I just put a big blob there and then I'm just gonna pull it down with that texture tool there. Now I love a mark like this because we're gonna get all those lovely organic sort of patterns there. It's just, you can tell it's a mixed media technique. It's not perfect, but it's perfect because it isn't perfect. And that's what we've done there with the matte creamy acrylics. Now watch how well this embosses. Um, I will use the same embossing folder just for this. Now, again, I'm gonna make sure that I'm putting it into the embossed side face down here. Then we close it. It's a great idea to let this, uh, let the paint dry, you know, for a really good amount of time before you do this. Otherwise, if the paint's still wet, it is gonna stick to your embossing folder. And there we go. So with this being um, a 3D embossing folder, I'm gonna bring it back through the other way, just because uh, we tend to go by the rule of three here, uh, where it's a 3D embossing folder, so put it through the machine three times. I think with this, two times is going to be fine. Now look how well this embosses. How about that? So we don't have any tears through that paint. The paint's got the elasticity to do this, but that is so cool. I just think it's a really cool technique. And this is how we can, again, achieve that sort of multi-tone with your embossing folders here. That is so cool. 
And that's that's the, the metallic creamy acrylic. You, again, you can do this with the other acrylic. I just love the way it shines with the uh, metallic acrylics. Um, okay, so that was tip number three. Now, tip number four, I love this tip, and I've only sort of learned about it quite recently. Um, I've been watching other people have a go at sort of, you know, doing different techniques with this. And now this one was actually uh, told to me by Pete Hughes, he showed me how to do this. It's a really lovely technique. Now I've taken this, this is a, uh, an embossing folder. It's a Tim Holtz embossing folder. Now the reason I've chosen this one is because it has a particularly flat surface here. It's almost like a 2D embossing folder, but it's not. Now we've got loads of flat surface here and over here we've got like, sort of lots to work on here because I'm gonna brayer over this with ink. I'll show you how I'm doing that now. So I've sprayed that, I'm just letting that water soak through. Uh, then I've taken some tattered rose. Now this, the embossing folders from chapter one, it, it's called doily. The reason I've chosen this is because it's kind of vintage looking. So I chose to use some vintage colors with that. So I went with my tattered rose. I'll just, uh, I'll, do you know what? I could apply it straight down on here, but what I don't want at the minute is I don't want to get those edges in there. So I'm going to use the brayer with these. There we go. So I'm going to make sure that the brayer is nice and coated with that ink. Now I'm going to apply the ink across here. Now this is where it comes in handy that we've got all those kind of flat surfacey bits here. And I want to make sure even if I'm doing a blend, I'm getting a good coverage on here. Like this. There we are. And then I'm going to come in with a bit of the antique linen. And I'll just apply that to a few areas. Again, we want to get blends in here. We love a blend. And then finally, we've got Victorian velvet. And let's just apply that to some of these edges here. It can be subtle. There we go. Now the exciting part. I get to add my cardstock to here. Now we, we need to, once we've closed it, make sure that that stays in place because if we get a smear through there, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, Layer up my die cutting machine, whichever machine you are using. And then let's push that through. Now again, I'm just going to choose to go through twice with this. We don't need it to be uh, really defined to show you the effect here. Here we go. And have a look. I love doing my big reveals here. I hope it, I hope it works out. Have a look at that. So what's happened here is that where I've brayed all of that uh, lovely uh, oxide, so I've used oxide for this because they're a bit more opaque than the Distress inks, where I've uh, applied it, it's missed all of these uh, embossed elements from the embossing folder. So all of this is gonna remain this lovely crisp white. And then over it, we're gonna have all those lovely blended inks. Now you can use any inks that you want. This is a technique you can use with any embossing folder, but I choose to use the ones that I've got a good flat surface for me to bray it on. Now, um, Again, I've chosen some of those more vintage colors because this is a vintage uh, embossing folder. It's a Tim Holtz embossing folder. We've got that lovely kind of vintage style um, and that's why I've sort of chosen the colors to go with that theme. But all I would do to finish this off, here's one I prepared earlier. I've just laid it up onto a background and then a lovely classy sentiment. to stick over the front here. Uh, I've just I've just printed out um, a serif font here because I know that's lovely and classy. And have a look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Now, uh, before we end it, we've got another piece here. So I could have, on the back of here where we've got the other element here, I could either brayer over here and I can pick up 
just the raised bits there. So let's try that just for an added technique. So how about this? There we go. And we're just picking up now those embossed elements that are coming out. And there we are. How cool is that? So, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you've got a lot of tips from it and I hope this can kind of enhance your embossing game. I know it did for me when I researched all these fantastic techniques. Um, again, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, give us a, a subscribe and I will see you next time.